morning and welcome to our time of worship, a time to gather together in spirit from our homes. This Sunday is a special Sunday. It is Christian Family Sunday and of course Mother's Day. And so we gather to celebrate what that means to each of us. We come from home, some of us filled with busyness and noise of little ones and schoolwork. Others of us gather from homes that are much quieter than that, living with just ourselves or with the company of one other. But each of us comes together into this community as part of God's family, a family where we join together, where we celebrate and rejoice, where we share one another's burdens and, and times of, of distress, knowing that when we gather together under God's home, we are all part of this together. And so on this Christian Family Sunday, let us remember that we are part of God's family, that we are in God's presence throughout all of our lives. And so let us take this time together this morning to worship God. There's always lots going on here at Heritage United Church. Sometimes we are doing it a little differently though. Of course, we are right now as we continue to stay home safe as we are being reminded to do. And I hope that all of you are, are staying safe at home, staying well, and you are receiving the newsletter to remind you of the things that continue to happen here at Heritage United Church. As I've mentioned in previous weeks, some of you are receiving this by mail if you are not on the internet, and others of you will be receiving this through our online newsletter. To draw your attention this week, um, again, we have continued to do the masks, and uh, th these have, well, you know, heritage folk always step up to a challenge, and I know that many are continuing to make lots and lots of these to go out to the hospitals and to, to other organizations that require them to share them with family members so they can safely go out shopping. Um, I have continued to keep the baby picture in here, baby hats. I do have a few down in the office and we will at the right time continue to take these over to the hospital for all the little new ones that are born into our community. It is always a joy to be able to share things like that. We have a new project and uh, I'm excited about this. I don't know about you, but I like to bake. I like to bake a lot and i uh, got to be careful not to bake too much while we're spending so much time at home and not maybe getting quite as much exercise as before. But we are starting a Heritage's Recipes Remembering Our Connection with Faith, Family and Friends. We're gathering recipes to put into print and uh, so we're looking for you to share your favorites and share a special memory of to, as to why this particular recipe is special to you. Let us know who is, who's it, who's it was from, and, and, and uh, we would like to be able to include that within our book. You can pass on your recipes uh, by email, or by certainly you're more than welcome to also hand write them and put them in snail mail if you'd rather, and you can send them to both myself or Betty Burkholder, and we would be happy to compile them and get this process started. And by all means, if you have any questions at all, please do not hesitate to ask. We look forward to continuing to grow this recipe book. I know we've already got a couple of it, couple in from Evelyn Lilly, and we thank you for that, Evelyn. You've got the ball rolling on this, and I can't wait to see which recipes you've provided us with. Our Zoom coffee time has continued, and we see 15 to 18 people every week, Mondays and Wednesdays at 12 o'clock for half an hour, just to check in and see how you're doing, find out what's going on in, in your community, and just to say, hey, we, we, we miss you, but uh, we're continuing our, to do our best to stay connected, and so we hope you will join us. It's not that hard to, to get online with this or to use your telephone and call in. If you need any help, please just give me a call during the week and I will be happy to walk you through it. I had to just say too, uh, you know, this is not really so much, it is an announcement, but it's not, it's sort of a personal thing here. I walked in this morning to do the service and sitting here on my pulpit, which you're not gonna be able to see very well, I'll hold it a little bit closer. It's a pocket prayer. I just love this. Diane Smith made this for me. And in the back is a tiny little pocket. And I'm gonna take it out for you and I'm gonna read what it says. This says, God bless Reverend Lori in her ministry. 
Amen. What a blessing to receive this as I come in here to worship in this space by myself, remembering where all of you usually are with me. And I am going to put this in my pocket, Diane, and thank you. It's just beautiful. I am blessed with some very crafty folk here in this church, and uh, quilting is certainly one of them. To put this together in this little tiny piece, thank you so much. I'm always reminded, too, of all the ways we give here at Heritage United Church. I mean, people are still giving, even though we're not gathering together. When we were Zooming just yesterday afternoon, we were talking about people connecting with others by phone and just checking up on one another. That's certainly one way we're giving. Um, I came in this morning and there was flowers here for me to, to enjoy as part of our service. There was more flowers downstairs from Bath Crichton who left them for me. These were from Diane who came in to just tidy things up a little bit up here on, uh, by the pulpit for me. And Beth Crichton came in to do some cleaning up downstairs and into this space and left me some, some daffodils from her garden. So I look forward to taking both of these home today. We all give, we all find ways of doing that. Uh, Jennifer continues to give musically each week to our services. Um, and Karen's been singing and Mark's been playing and Brian's been putting it all together so that we have this conglomeration of music. And I know all of you will be giving in other ways too to our community and the folks in your neighborhoods. And I just remind you to continue to remember the church as part of that giving um, financially as well. It does help to keep our ministry alive and well as we continue to, to walk our way through this time, this, this time of uncertainty. But I have hope we will be back together in this worship space once again one day. But for now, let us continue to give in our ministry the ways we can. Your offering will always be received graciously in both talents as well as in tithes. And so let us take a moment now as we, as we embrace this time together, as we all gather, reminded that we are all part of God's family and that, you know, Jesus gathered with those around him as well. And, and he shared relationships and compassion and understanding and healing. And so we know that wherever two or three are gathered in Christ's name, that Christ is present with us. And so may Christ be present with us in this time of sharing this morning as we celebrate together on this, on this Sunday morning. I invite you to join me as we take a moment now as we share together in our opening prayer. Let us pray together. God of love, we thank you for the gift of family. We know there are many people who have loved and nurtured us over the years. Today, we especially remember mothers and those who have been like mothers to us. For the laughs shared, the tears cried and hugs received, we shout your praises. May we continue to open our hearts and be touched by your gift of caring in our lives. All this we pray in your loving embrace. Amen. At this time, I invite you to join me as we sing together our opening hymn this morning, Praise the Lord the Almighty. Let us sing together. Have you not seen how all 
It is story time for the young and young at heart, one of my favorite times every Sunday morning as I gather here on the chancel steps with those from the congregation to share in a special story with them of the life and teachings of Jesus. This morning, I have been gathering with my usual friends over here with me. Uh, I've got Mrs. Bonnet, Peepers the Chick, I've got Fair Crow and Moose, and my latest friend here is Chimp. Diane Smith dropped Chimp off for me yesterday so that we could, he could join us. Chimp is a special gift from her husband, Paul, when she wasn't well a number of years ago, and so it plays a very special place in her heart, and I'm really glad to have Chimp here with us. Thank you for sharing him with us, Diane. We'll place them right here with Mrs. Bonnet, and you have some new friends to meet with Chimp. This morning, I was thinking about Mother's Day, and you know, I'm gonna call my mom later on to wish her a happy Mother's Day, because she's very special to me. She does lots of wonderful things for me. She's done so many things for me ever since I was a kid. And so I got thinking about moms and, and, and the moms of those from our congregation. And so I, I contacted all of our younger ones to see if they could tell me something special about their moms. And this is what I've got. Sorry there, friends. I'm going to have to cover you up for a few minutes. So the first one I've got, I want to share with you. This is from Gracie. And Gracie says, she is always there for me. That's really nice. Another one. This is from Devin. And Devin says, she makes me a hot lunch, which is a really special thing right now while mom's working from home to have mom be the one to make her a hot lunch. What else have I got? Oh, this one is from Eric. And Eric says, she makes me waffles and plays baseball with me. That sounds like a really great day. I like waffles. This is from Skylar, and Skylar says, she buys me cool things like toys and stuff. Ooh, that sounds like a good thing. What else have I got? Oh, this one is from Wyatt, and Wyatt says, she gives me snacks. There seems to be a bit of a common theme around food here, don't you think, folks? What else have I got? Oh, this one is from Dominic. And uh, Dominic says, Mummy settles me down at night. After his busy day, Mummy helps Dominic to get ready for bed. That must be a nice way to get ready. Ooh. And this one always makes me chuckle, Katie, every time I look at it. This is from Edward. I think Edward is the youngest of our kids. Edward says, she gives me free time after schoolwork. How much schoolwork is Edward doing? I think that's great. And I've got... This one is from Elena. Elena says, mom bakes for me and lets me help too. And you know what? I have seen mom's baking on Facebook when she's posted things she's made. And I must say they certainly look good. A couple more. This one is from Grayson. Grayson is also really happy to have mommy home right now. And he says she makes breakfast and lunch every day. And those are actually all the ones I've got. These are the wonderful things that our children from our congregation have thought of. Moms do a lot of things. They don't always seem like big things or significant things, but all together they make something really beautiful. I made sure to do this on the flower petals just to show how beautiful and how special each of these things are. Mothers, mothers-in-law, grandmothers, aunts, cousins, sisters, friends, mentors, coaches, even dads. They can fill these roles and these important people in our lives. God bless each and every one of you on this Mother's Day and Christian Family Sunday. You are a blessing to all of us. Thank you. 
the scripture for today is uh, from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 2 to 10. Even so, many will follow their licentious ways, and because of these teachers, the way of truth will be maligned. And in their greed, they will exploit you with deceptive words. Their condemnation pronounced against them long ago has not been idle, and their destruction is not asleep. For if God did not spare the angels when they sinned but cast them into hell and committed them to chains of deepest darkness to be kept until the judgment, and if he did not spare the ancient world, even though he saved Noah, a herald of righteousness, with seven others when he brought a flood on the world of the ungodly. And if by turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah to ashes, he condemned them to extinction and made them an example of what is coming to the ungodly. And if he rescued Lot, a righteous man, greatly distressed by the licentiousness of, of the lawless, for that righteous man living among them day after day, he was tormented in his righteous soul by their lawless deeds that he saw and heard. Then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trial and to keep the unrighteous under punishment until the day of judgment, especially those who indulge their flesh in depraved lust and who despise authority, bold and willful. They are not afraid to slander the glorious ones. So ends the lesson for today. Amen. I'd like to thank Diane Smith for reading our first passage from scriptures this morning from 1 Peter. Let us now hear a reading from the Gospel of John. John chapter 14, verses 1 to 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. For you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been with you, among you for such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you are not just my own. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe in me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the F Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. God bless these readings from our scriptures this morning. Amen. It is said that a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. These words are attributed to Leo Tao, a Chinese philosopher who wrote a lot about Tao, a Chinese system of belief. I read this quote is more accurately translated from the Chinese to the journey of a thousand miles begins beneath one's feet. 
I love both these statements. At first glance, they might seem to have almost identical meanings. They could be thought of as interchangeable, but if you think about it a little longer, you begin to see that they are actually quite different from each other. The less well-known but correct translation, the journey of a thousand miles begins beneath one's feet, is such a beautiful statement. For me, it is filled with optimism and hope. It's about looking at where you are, right here, right now, accepting where you're standing now and not looking back. It's about seeing what needs to change in yourself. It's about preparing to move forward for growth, for, for moments that are exciting. It's empowering and it's filled with anticipation. The more widely known version, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. It teaches patience, determination and perseverance. I believe it to be true when we think about the journey before us, when we have a, a goal we are trying to reach, or there is something that challenges us. Both may feel like a million steps away. It teaches gentleness in the art of change. And you don't have to do it all at once. Just take a step in the direction that you want to go. So it offers hope and encouragement to anyone who is on a difficult path, especially where there is the temptation to give up or not even start out in the first place. But what if we combine the two translations? To me, they complement one another because being aware of what's beneath your feet before you begin will help you to decide where to place your foot with that first step, and all the others will follow. This philosophy can apply to many aspects of our lives, including our families. Today, we celebrate our mothers and Christian Family Sunday, and it's a chance to look closely at how both affect the journey we all are on as we take in life. You know, family is a word that is being defined in more open and fluid ways these days. 25 years ago, when families would get together for a special function, the gathering would be filled with blood relations. But today, those referred to as family can include close friends, but may not include cousins, uncles, and aunts, many of whose family members might not even know. These inclusions or exclusions are not a function of a family rift. They just reflect the reality of life and ties to loved ones who have felt like, act like, and thus become like family. Our families teach us how to treat others who we don't know well or at all. How we work together, becoming role models for those we care for lending a helping hand or listening ear to those who are in need at this time. It is showing unity in the moment when someone needs us or by their side as we take the first step of a long journey together. On this Mother's Day weekend, I have been reflecting especially on those individuals who have been mothers, grandmothers, and women who show deep concern for others who aren't necessarily part of their families. Yes, there is joy in being a person who cares for another, but sometimes those little joys can become sources of anxiety, the uncertainties of life, unpredictability, those times when we can't see the distance that leads us in our de destination. Unfortunately, we only have to think of the situation we all face now to see that we live in a world with much that makes for troubled hearts. 
In the reading from John's Gospel this week, we find Jesus is in the upper room, engaged in a conversation with his disciples, those who have been like family to him, those who, who have been on that, those first steps with him in his ministry. Here he assures them that they will carry on after he's gone. They too face uncertainties and need reassurance that there is hope ahead of them. Jesus says to them, do not let your hearts be troubled. To be sure, Jesus was addressing the specific anxiety of these disciples because Jesus announced that he was preparing them for his imminent departure. They are more than a little confused because they cannot imagine how to go on without him. Everything they've been hoping for seemed possible because he had been present. Could it be, though, that these worst words first expressed to the troubled hearts of the disciples also provided words of encouragement for them? Do not let your hearts be troubled. So what is a troubled heart? What meaning does it hold? I looked up the word troubled in the dictionary just to be clear, and it means worried, distressed, anxious. God knows that our hearts are troubled sometimes. God knows that this can be the reality for several times in our lives. Further, Jesus knows something about the experience of having a troubled heart, of feeling abandoned. So he knows when he says, I am going away and where I am going, you cannot come. The disciples will be in extreme mental anguish. They just got him back. And now he's leaving again? He knows the pain and sorrow his announcement will cause. So we add to the first part of his command of, do not let your hearts be troubled. And... Believe in God, believe also in me. Armed with this, the disciples take the first step on their new journey. Start with a sound belief in him. Unfortunately, what is beneath your feet, you begin your journey. Only then can you move forward effectively. Of course, I'm not suggesting that by doing this, all of your troubles will somehow magically just disappear. Believing in Jesus sets us on a course for our faith walk. And even though some things are unrevealed, they do not separate us from the love of God. We will find help step by step as we move forward, as we follow Jesus. While the disciples are still trying to take all of this in, Jesus tells them that they know the way to the place where he is going. Thomas, being Thomas, voices the question that I'm sure was on everyone's mind in the room and wanted to ask, but were afraid to. Lord, we don't know where you are going. How can we possibly know the way? Jesus says, follow me. His original command to them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You can get to God, the ultimate reality, only through me, by me, by my example. Once they understood what this meant, and we know that it was not in that instant for sure, but later when Jesus was gone, they would too would come to know what they needed to carry on and to do the work that had been given to them. In the meantime, however, Jesus insists that they live up to the challenge that he has set before them by carrying on the mission and ministry that he began, quite possibly one step at a time. To remember that, regardless of what happens, they will press on in new and in exciting ways and continue to be supported by God. We experience this too, knowing that we, as people of faith, will also live on doing the work that Jesus first established, and we will find support 
to do these things through God's Spirit working in our lives. The section from 1 Peter that we heard today also helps us to make clearer what this means. Peter is writing years later to the whole church about what it means to follow in the countercultural footsteps of Jesus. The church of Peter's time would have been a marginalized, outcast, tiny minority sect that adhered to a completely different set of cultural values than the rest of the world. So Peter tries to express the importance of nurturing new Christians in the faith. He says plainly that it takes the hard work of building one stone at a time in order to see God's house raised to fullness and glory. Remember, you only know what you know. It takes the church, the entire church, to raise a Christian in his or her faith. That is why we all pledge to support the spiritual growth of those we baptize here. We work with God to help them to grow into determined followers of Jesus who will change the world in ways he did. Now I realize that we have not witnessed, as those first disciples did, the divine presence in the water transformed into wine before their eyes or the five barley loaves multiplied and shared by thousands on a hilltop. Perhaps we have not seen or touched the embodied form of the one who is the spitting image of God, but we do come face to face with God. We see Jesus when we witness acts of compassion, in those moments when concern for another leaves no place for judgment. We glimpse the presence of Jesus when friends gather to share another's suffering and whenever pain gives way to healing. And hopefully our ministry of service reveals God to others. After all, Jesus called the church into being so that his presence would continue in the world. By the power of the Spirit, we are called to carry something of God in us every day. And so we celebrate what it means to be part of the Christian family this morning, and we honor those who have been moms to us. We hear again that we are called and commissioned to the work of bringing people into the encounter with the holy. And this only works, though, if we let people accompany us along the way, those from our past and those in our present. It is so important that we learn from those who have gone before us, who have been the cornerstones of our growth as Christians. Some folks are blessed to be born into families, neighborhoods, and communities with such cornerstones that are nurturing, encouraging, sustaining, comforting, and challenging. They live in households and family circles that provide a context for joy, for creativity, for spiritual depth, for positive emotional development. They grow secure in these places in the world and confident that they are valued and loved. They learn from an early age to be sensitive to the needs of others and to care about them, to be happy, to have them in their lives. Unfortunately, some are born into situations that are less positive and therefore are more limited in their capacity to bear the fruit of healthy, happy, and well-adjusted human beings. The process of self-discovery and self Acceptance is often far more difficult for these individuals. They have not been as fortunate to have the cornerstones to grow from. A few years ago, the label dysfunctional family came into use. We hear it a little less nowadays. And we all know that no family is perfect, that every family has its rough edges, areas in which things could be improved. But on Mother's Day, 
also called in the church Christian Family Sunday, we need to celebrate the gifts of mothers and of motherhood, bearing in mind that not everyone's experience of family are the same. We also know that this day, this celebration can be hard for people. Memories, good ones and painful ones, come to the surface, and so it can become a lonely day. So we need to remember that we are all connected, not only to the families and communities in which we are a part of, but to something so much larger. As a faith community, we offer love and support to each other, and we have the opportunity and the responsibility to offer love and support to others. We are not yet part of all of this faith community alone. There is something so much bigger in this beyond us. And the important thing to remember on this day and every day is that a faith community like our congregation here at Heritage United Church, whatever else it may be or do, has the basic yet vital job of helping people realize that we are all connected to God. We are all part of God's family. No matter how we may feel about life at this present time, so that in all our moments we realize that we know and have seen God, and that we believe in the one who has chosen not to be God without us, but the one who draws near to us each and every day. May we always remember that as we take each step in our journey, this day and all our days. Let us pray together. Loving God, as the glory of spring unfolds around us, we give thanks for ordinary miracles, for the warming sun that lifts our spirits, for the flowers and trees that have been reawakened and whose greeting once again reassures us of your continuing presence. May we be inspired by this reawakening to work to preserve the delicate balance of our earth and its resources. Today on this Christian Family Sunday, this Mother's Day, we remember families and women everywhere. We pray for those families who know loving care and acceptance. We also pray for those families struggling with anger, stress, and abuse. We pray for all the families in which we claim membership. Birth families, adopted families, chosen families, the human family, our church family. We ask your special best blessing, loving and caring God on all our families. In loving God, this morning we continue to pray for those who work in fire and rescue, emergency rooms and intensive care units. Sustain those who give up the mind, body and spirit to care, to heal and restore. Shelter these intelligent, deeply caring souls in your eternal time. For those who donate their money and talents, volunteering in all manners of ways, in shelters, at food banks, tending neighbors, providing care to children of essential workers, a little goes a long way. Help us to be present in those moments. God, have a compassion for our desire to do everything we can. Love us when we feel we can't do enough or figure things out fast enough. Loving God, we take a moment now to think of those in our lives who this day are in need of comfort and healing, those who are suffering in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles. And so we take a moment now to offer up in prayer those who weigh heaviest on our minds this day. God, in your mercy, put your arms around each one and hold them in your tender embrace of love. Dear God, beyond all time and space, 
We have woken up to just another day, an hour or a moment. The cooking, the cleaning, the teaching and learning of things, the noticing of what's happening around us, sundown, the moon, the stars, a bird chirping in a tree, a toad hunkered down in the mulch, hearing kind laughter, receiving a letter or a smile. During our day, help us to notice, make sense of the ordinariness of everyday life. Isn't it a lovely gift for you to us and a chance to again be thankful? All this we pray as together we pray the words that were given to us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And as we go back to the world, we go back singing. Let us rejoice in our closing hymn this morning, and let us sing. Would you bless our home and families? Let us sing together. memories of family and friends, strengthened by the families we have chosen for ourselves. Knowing our membership in the great family of God, we leave this time of worship with hearts open, with faith stronger, with purpose clearer to be God's family in one another and to God's world. May we go in confidence and promise, for God is with us. Amen and Amen.